I vote because I want to be represented in the decisions about the future of our country. Just like my mother who votes in Spanish, it's our right and our responsibility to be heard. Go online and find out how you can register in one of seven languages and vote. You count. Where are you now? Right now, I'm headed to the dentist of all places. I'm breaking the law talking to you, but uh, I heard we had to... Dude, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Excuse me for interrupting, but did you think you were going to impress me that you're breaking the law by speaking on your phone by talking to me? I broke the law by driving your car into somebody's house. That's how you break the law if you want to play with me. But I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. Well, I just wanted to hit on... My story isn't as tough as some of those other people, but I'm really glad they pulled out of where they were. Um, the main reason that I'm where I'm at and happy about it is because at the point that I had given up on myself and was about to... Uh, to come to a life of mediocrity and just go, okay, I'm not going to deal with women anymore. Mediocrity, a life worse than death. Go ahead, man. I was just saying I'd rather die than be mediocre. uh, At the point, I didn't believe in myself. Uh, My old girlfriend from back in school uh, found me on the phone, and she still believed in me. She still wanted to be with me. And uh, that was just enough to keep me going. And uh, two years later, I'm with her. We're going to be together forever. Beautiful. Hold on the line. That's the way to end a $50 gift certificate to the Cellular in downtown Fullerton. The Cellular, your special event destination, CellularDining.com. Here's Tom Likas. From Hollywood, California. Okay, hold on. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. I'm not smoking pot. I'm not drinking. And this is ridiculous. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Well, look at this from USA Today. A new survey of the USA's religious beliefs and practices finds that 55% of all adults including one in five of those who say they have no religion. One in five. Believe they have been protected from harm by a guardian angel. (laughs) Really? Do we have listeners who feel this way? Really? Really? We're going to do something we don't normally do, Dean. Uh, we're going to take any caller you get. And that includes old people, children, um, any gender. I don't care. I have to hear about that. 55% of all adults believe they've been protected from harm by a guardian angel. Wow. Sociologist Christopher Bader of Baylor University in Waco, Texas, said, I would never have expected these numbers. It was the biggest surprise to me in our findings. Members of almost every major religious group sensed angels running heavenly interference. Evangelical Protestants, 66%. Black Protestants, 81%. Mainline Protestants, 55%. Catholic, 57%. Jewish. 10% of Jews believe they've been helped by a guardian angel. Other religions, 49%. No religion, 20%. Really? Really? Matthew Gilbert of the Institute of Noetic Sciences in Petaluma, California. Studies subjective experiences using scientific techniques, he said, People's sense of the divine 
is remarkably widespread and tangible, even if they don't call it God. Clearly, there's a sense of the sacred prevalent throughout society. Kenneth Pergament. Not just into paint, he's a psychology professor at Bowling Green University who has written on spirituality and the psyche. He said, just as people have many different images of God, so they have different ways of interpreting guardian angels or God's voice. He said they may not be envisioning an angel with wings so much as a loved one who has gone before them and is looking after their well-being. Many responded said they have, quote, heard the voice of God. Indeed you have. Or, quote, felt God speaking to me. 55%? All right. Again, I don't care if you're 150 years old. I will talk to anyone. If you believe you've been saved by a guardian angel, I have to hear about this right now. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. 1-800-5800-866. Now again, it's a guardian angel. Not saved by a lucky charm or a rabbit's foot or some other object. You had to be saved by a guardian angel. Because this survey says 55% of everybody says they've been saved by a guardian angel. If you've been saved by a guardian angel, call me now at 1-800-5800-TALK. It's 1-800-5800-866. Dexter, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? I'm doing great. Well, I'll tell you a story. Um... It was late at night, coming back from work, uh, shot straight past the stop sign, didn't even see it, it was covered by a tree. Um, there was a car coming uh, parallel to me. I had to swerve to miss it. I crashed into an embankment, and my car was completely totaled. I mean, it was wiped out, gone. I mean, it was thrashed. Myself... I had not a scratch on me, not a single scratch, not a bump, not a bruise, not a scratch. And what makes you think a guardian angel was involved? Well, I would say it was more... See... Now, wait, I, I asked for people to call in who've been saved by a guardian angel. Right, right, so right. So that means right. that's what happened to you. Right, right. So well, what makes I, you think a guardian angel was involved? Well, I think it was in the form... I think my guardian angel was in the form Don't of Don't say it was in the form of a seatbelt or an airbag. I'm talking about a guardian angel. Absolutely. Um, I think my guardian angel was in the form of a lucky microphone. Because it was sitting on the seat next to me, and after I crashed, I could not find it at all. It was gone. And I scaled the entire car, as well as outside of the car, and I could not find it. And so because a microphone disappeared, you believe it was a guardian angel? Yeah. Come on. You're, I don't even think you believe that. No, it's true. I mean, I, I can't think of any other explanation. I, I, think there is, I think it was a very lucky microphone. I mean, everywhere I took it with me, um, good things happened. And it just disappeared after a car crash. I mean, I, I, I cherished that thing. I had it in a box sitting right next to me. Uh, as I was driving home, it was in the passenger seat sitting right next to me. And then it just disappeared after the crash. So you believe the guardian angels could take the form of a microphone? Well, yeah, I think, I think, I think luck can be instilled in anything. And I, and I think, uh, you know, it, it can run out at a certain point and maybe it'll just dissipate into air. I see. All right, thank you for that. I'm not going to make fun of anybody. I'm just asking questions. All right, have you been uh, saved by a guardian angel? I have to know. Bernard, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yeah, Tom. Yeah. I was saved by a guardian angel in, in 1993, New Year's Day. 
I was. Uh, what year was that? 1993. 1993. You were saved by a guardian angel. How did that happen? I, I was. I was riding with my cousin in the car. I was the passenger in the car with him, and a guy pulled up on the side of us and and told me to roll down my window. And when I rolled down my window, I was in the middle of La Brea and Jefferson. I rolled down my window. The guy came out with a big forty five gun and shot eighteen holes. He was right next to me, not not a car length ahead or behind me, right next to me. Started rolling down the window asking for directions. Rolled down the window and just start shooting. He shot eighteen holes in the car. Four t four of the bullets hit me. One in four, uh, two in my thigh. He's one in each side, one in the foot, one in my stomach, and one hit my cousin, and the bullets were flying everywhere. And I, 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 uh, the police told my cousin, didn't think I was dead. I'm sorry, we don't think your cousin's going to make it. I think he's going to, you know, but give us some information. And I was blessed, saved by a guardian angel. How do you know it was a guardian angel? Because I... I know. I believe it. I, I I've seen it. I have faith. You saw it, or you believe it? I I, I believe it. I what what it. makes I, you I believe it was I, a guardian angel, not just luck? No, it wasn't luck. It was a guardian angel. Why wasn't it luck? Because I I, I felt it. I felt the I felt the I felt the uh, uh, the spirit. Some, some, the the the, the uh, uh, this. I can't explain it. You can't explain it, Tom. Okay. All right, Bernard, I just wanted to know. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. I'm talking to people who've been saved by a guardian angel. Michael, on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much. Yeah, when I was uh, seven years old, um, I was playing out front of my house, and I remember this very vividly. Uh I was I was playing outside or whatever, and it was getting it was like five or six in the afternoon, and a couple pulled up and pulled up right next to my house, and they both got out, and they were trying to. Uh, uh, the only thing I can think of is they were trying to kidnap me because they both came out. They didn't say anything. They just kind of like. They didn't uh, tell you they were going to kidnap you. You think they were going to kidnap you? Well, I know for you know what I know for you know for a fact. You know for a fact yeah, I know they for said, a fact "Hey, come back here. We want to kidnap you." No, I was a little kid, and I, I mean... They had a big net, and they were going to try to catch you in it. No, they, got the, they had their big hair. The trunk Actually. of the car was open, and they were ready to throw you in. Well, no, they had well, they had a, a lady driving in the front seat, and a, a, guy, a guy in the passenger seat, he got out, and I was just running around my front yard, and he starts walking towards me, and I was a little kid, so I was automatically afraid, you know? And he starts running towards me, and then with his arms out, and so... I started running and there was my and I had nowhere to really run to. I was in front of my house and all of a sudden he just stopped and I and and like he looked around. There was nobody around. My neighbor, my neighbor was pretty empty and he just stopped and uh, he it looked like he was scared. Something he jumped right back in his car and the only thing I can think of is maybe I had a guardian angel standing right there because uh, it was. I mean, I think about it all the time. How close, you don't think I, I maybe mean, you were just like, lucky? Excuse me, sir. You don't think maybe you were just lucky? Well, yeah. I mean, it could be luck. I would like to think it was something more than luck because. Uh, I don't know, that was pretty, that was a close call. You would like to think it's more than luck. Why would you like to think that? Because uh, I do feel there's like a, uh, there's a superior being to all of us, and I, I feel there's someone looking, looking well, let down me Well, let me give you an example. If you were on the Metrolink train last week, uh -huh. where, were your, where would your guardian angel have been that day? That's very true. That's, but maybe it would just, uh, people have certain times. I, well, I mean, that's I, my I point. It's, uh, isn't it the luck of the draw? You know what? Yeah, it might be. It might be. But it might not also. So, I mean, I don't know. I just know that, I mean, I just know either I got lucky or uh, there was something there. You know, I mean, it was a scary, I still think Either that. you got lucky or it was a guardian angel. Uh, I'm going to have to say, you know what, it, it, it was probably luck. <laughs> there, luck, that, yeah, uh, well, luck that I was, you know, just, he didn't catch me. You just collapsed like a house of cards. Like 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Hey, doing the Lord's work, Father. Keep it up. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show on 1-800-5800-TOM. I'm talking to people who say they've been saved by a guardian angel. Irene. On the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. Hi, Irene. 
Well, here's my story. Um, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, I was involved in a hit and run accident. And I saw this coming because of road rage. And the person that hit me at the time, it was like everything was in slow motion. And all of a sudden, something just told me, grab onto my steering wheel at 10 and 2. And I was holding on so tight that I felt that I didn't really have control of my arms. I couldn't, I didn't take my hands off. The guy hit me, and I was no more than two inches away from my car going under a big rig that was next to me and having my car shred into pieces under his tires. How do you know that uh, it wasn't just that you were in shock, but you actually did it yourself? I don't know. It, it's just so why would you assume a guardian angel? That's the thing I don't understand. I assume it. Um, I was born and raised Catholic, but my cousin actually passed away five years ago from a car accident. Um, hit and, not hit and run, I'm sorry, was a drunk driver. But um, No guardian it, angel there, was there? You know, it, it's kind of weird because her girlfriend that was in the car... Um, ended up having really minor injuries, and and our family kind of feels that the girlfriend had a guardian angel. Well, well, it's not just that. We kind of figure it was her time to go. And why did you, know, you figure that? It's just when when it's time to go, it's time to go. There, you believe there, that? I believe that. And for me, it wasn't my time to go. Well, maybe it was your time to go, but the guardian angel decided otherwise. I don't know. It, it was one of those weird, phenomenal feelings of, you know, not really having control. The shock didn't come to me until about two minutes after the guy had taken off. You know, I was focused. I, I was just holding on tight. You know, my heart was racing, but I wasn't in, in a shock. And after the guy had hit, hit me and left, I was stunned, and I pulled over, and that's when the shock and all the emotions came forth. Yeah, but maybe you were shocked when you said you didn't feel your hands or you didn't feel like you were controlling the car. Maybe you were controlling it, but because you were shocked, you didn't feel like you were. I know. It's one of those weird feelings. <laughs> but why would you believe it was a guardian angel? That's my question. I think it's just a guardian angel. Um, I think that... My guardian angel comes and helps me out when I'm having trouble. So on that Metrolink train, nobody had a guardian angel? I think people's times were people's times. So anybody who got that train, God decided that all these people who come from all different cities, different genders, different races, God just took a big cudgel and said with a big wide swath, it's all your times, all of you. It could, it could very well And no that. guardian angels. They could have had their angels waiting for them on the other side. So th this is like an all-purpose explanation for everything. I think so. Okay. Yeah, you think so, but that's your explanation for everything. Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM. We're talking to people who say they've been saved by a guardian angel. Michael on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm okay. Good. Well, I, I feel that I was truly saved by a guardian angel when I was 13 years old. Um, we used to live across the street from a courthouse, which had a five-story parking structure. And as kids, we used to go to the parking structure, take the water hose out the fire, the fire hydrant fixtures, and we used to swing. We started off on the first floor and swing across. And then we climbed up to the second floor and did the same thing. Well, we started doing it eventually from the fifth floor, being dumb kids. We're hanging this water. We're hanging over the edge and just jumping off with the water hose and swing across. One day I didn't make, you know, didn't make it across. Instead of me sliding down the hose, I started climbing up the water hose. And as I got in between the fourth and the fifth floor, one of my buddies that was up there decided to turn the hose on. The hose expand, brought my hands off of it, and down I fall. I hit a tree, I, I hit a branch of a tree first, and it fell into some bushes, but got up, walked away with just some scratches. And why do you think a guardian angel was involved in that? This is why. This is why I, I feel that there was an angel in my life. When we hung the water hose down, the water hose actually hung right over the entranceway which was a driveway, uh, a concrete driveway. And I was climbing straight up that hose. Um, 
And as I was falling down, before I hit anything, it was a flash. Now, people told me that was probably a, an adrenaline rush or whatever, but I don't know. All I know is it was a flash. Well, why a guardian angel? Maybe it was just luck. Well, that, I mean, that's, that's a hell of a lot for me to go from, from the concrete driveway that the water hose was hanging from about, oh, another 10 feet over to the edge where the shrub, where the tree and the shrubs well, were. Well, we heard a story about a guy a few uh, months ago who fell out a 16-story window and he lived. <laughs> and he probably had a guardian angel on the side. Why do you assume that? I mean, don't you think some people are just lucky? Well, yeah, I mean, there is luck. There's luck, but I can't assume that there wasn't a guardian angel. And who well. decides the assignment of guardian angels? Like, who gets them? Everybody? You get them at birth. Oh, everyone gets one? How does this I work? Believe, I believe you get them at birth. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe, maybe some, you know, maybe some are just off duty at the time. I don't know. So somebody who missed the Metrolink train last week had a guardian angel. Somebody who got on, guardian angel was on vacation? No, I wouldn't say that, but... But what happened? Maybe it was this time. It was just this time. Maybe it was, it was just time. their time. Well, why does the guardian angel decide it's your time and and and, and not somebody well, else's time? Instead of believe that, believing in, in, you know, that was luck, because we can all say it was luck. I mean, it's just a little more comforting to, to realize that there is, a, you know, a spiritual side to this. I mean, you, you know, you being an atheist, and, and I totally respect that. And I'm not a very religious man by far, you know, but that just kind of made me feel a little more comfortable about my situation. Now, believing all. it was a guardian angel made you feel more comfortable. Yeah, it just I'm just saying it, it made me feel a little more, you know, comfortable about this life. Yes, it did. Because you believe somehow you'll be protected the next time you do something stupid. Oh, no, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not banging on my chips with him now. Well, if you have a guardian angel, why would he save you one time and not another time? Because that one time might be my time. What does that mean? That one time might be my time to go. You know, it might just be my time. Everybody, they say, I don't know, like I said, I'm not spiritual, but they say that everyone has a date. When you're born, you're assigned, you're assigned a date of birth and you're assigned a date of death. Really? Is there a directory of this? Can I look myself up somewhere? Excuse me? Can I look myself up somewhere? Is there a list? <laughs> I don't think so, Tom. I mean, for example, if I knew my time was coming in a year, I'd leave this studio right now. <laughs> Spend the next 12 months spending all my money. I'm sure you would. <laughs> what am I doing here? Well, you know, I mean, some people believe in it. Like those people, people that got on the Metro Lake train, if they could have looked up their date, they would have been on the train. It's just, a, it's just a belief. That's all. It's some people. Believe they would have died on the know. beach in Tahiti. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that's kind of a way to go too. So, I don't know. That's the way I'd rather go. I'll tell you that. We're talking to people here who've been saved by a guardian angel. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. And you wonder why we get the politicians we get. This is Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I'm glad you're doing well today. Thank you. Yeah. Um, my situation, it was a year of graduated high school, heading up to Northern California with a buddy of mine on uh, piece, on uh, Highway 1. A uh, very foggy night, about 11 o'clock at night. And not only did it, I, we saw, I saw a spirit out the window. Let out some very loud expletives. My buddy woke up. He saw. He started screaming. And the gentleman was telling us to slow down, slow down. And he was moving as fast as their car. So I can't imagine it was a jogger running next to me. And sure enough, we came up. Wait, wait, wait. You saw something or you heard something? Absolutely saw it, Tom, and heard it. You, what, what, what did it look like? It was a torso of a human it was man. A torso, yes. Um, bit of like a wispy undertone to where the legs would be floating along wispy the Wispy undertone. Mm-hmm. Did it, it have and, a face? Uh, it, uh, it, uh, if my buddy hadn't have seen it, too, I would have thought I was All right. insane. What did the face look like? Mm, like an older gentleman. Old, an older like gentleman. The, uh, like a weathered, a weathered person who's been on a you know, worldly type of thing. Mm. Did he have a beard? I don't remember that much detail, Tom. Did he have any facial hair? remember that 
But uh, it was just the weirdest, weirdest experience of my life. Not only did it help us out tremendously, we got out of the car after that, and we're just like in, in awe. Can't say it was a guardian angel, but it's definitely a spirit of some sort. A spirit yes. with wispy undertones. Yes, I understand. It's very hard to believe. It's hard for me to believe myself. All right. <laughs> Thank you for that, Mark. Did somebody should do a poll of people who have been saved by a guardian angel and see who they're voting for. Bet I know who. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We're talking to people here who have been saved by a guardian angel. This is, um, oh, let's say hello here to Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mike. Hey, how's it going? Does it matter? Pretty much. I, I would miss your show terribly if you weren't around. Okay. i got to tell you about this. About 15 years ago, I was up in the woods of Oregon with my best friend. We were cutting down some trees to make firewood. And uh, I, I'm standing off clearly out of the fall line of the tree, and something, I would have to say a voice, although it was a little different than that, the back of my head said, Move, stupid! I, I'm, I looked around like, Who? And then I thought, Oh, well, and I moved. Sure enough, a gust of wind caught that tree and dropped it at almost 90 degrees from where it should have been, right on top of where I was standing. Okay, and uh, move, stupid. The uh, guardian angel said that? I don't have another explanation. I'm an agnostic myself. My friend, who happens to be Catholic, said, I was a guardian angel. You're lucky as hell. Mm -hmm. Funny thing about it, this has happened three times in my life. Once in Nam, I was on a swift boat. And something in the back of my head said, duck, and I did. And about that time, the boat got raked with machine gun fire. And was, another was time John I... Kerry there? Dig it. Never mind. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was working on my car, and something said, you know, get out. So I got out, and about that time, there had been a gas leak, and the engine was hot, and the whole inside of the car burst into flames. Well, could it be instinct? Uh, I don't think I'm that good, but it uh. could be, I guess. But couldn't I be my own guardian angel? Well, then then it's not a guardian angel, is it? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Josh on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are we doing today? We're. I don't know how you're doing. I'm doing great. Oh, I'm baking in the sun, but it could be worse. Yes. All right. So I was a uh, two or three years old, so I actually cannot remember this happening. This was told to me by my parents. But uh, the first time they took me up to the San Bernardino Mountains to kind of introduce me to snow, my grandparents and my parents, they took me, and uh, we were intertubing down this little hill. And as the story goes, my uh, dad uh, put me in his lap because I was too small to do it by myself. And we had hit a bump about halfway down the hill, and my dad fell off the tube, and I stayed on. And the whole family was running after me, but the momentum from the intertube was too quick. And the, the landing area, unless you could stop yourself, was the oncoming traffic. And as it goes, apparently at the last second, a black man came out from behind a tree, stopped the intertube. It was a black man? A black man, yes. A black the, what man. did he look like? I was two years old, sir. I have no clue. All right, so you're two years old, and a black guardian angel saved you. Yes, and, well, I can't say that for sure. My mom and dad, they all ran down the hill. They made made sure I was okay. They looked around to, you know, thank the guy for saving my life, and there wasn't a soul in sight. So I'm not the most religious guy. My parents are highly devout religious, but that's enough to keep me encouraged. I see. And uh, I, I truly believe that I was saved by a black guardian angel. My guardian angel happens to be black. Well, you know, when I was... Uh seven years old my family went to asbury park new jersey we couldn't That's afford beautiful. a real vacation so uh, our idea of a vacation when i was a kid i uh my dad would find some triple a rated motel on the jersey shore and we would get in the car and we would drive to new jersey in this case asbury park we would check into the motel and the motel had a pool and that was a vacation. And so uh, one day when my mother and father were in the shallow end of the pool and sitting having a conversation, they were paying no attention to me. I was looking down at the other end of the pool from the diving board. And I was saying, hey, look, I'm going to dive. Look, everybody, I'm going to dive. And nobody looked. 
So I'm like, all right, the hell with them. I'm jumping. And I jumped, and I sank like a rock to the bottom of the pool. I couldn't swim. I was in the deep end. It was like eight or nine feet deep. And I was, uh, what, four feet tall at the time, four and a half? I don't know. And literally, like a stone, I sunk to the bottom of the pool. And I remember ingesting all that water, and I remember my eyes and ears full of water, and I remember my lungs filling up with water. And I remember my father, who had been in the military and was, a, I think, an expert swimmer. Uh, my father had swum from the other end of the pool uh, all the way down to the floor of the pool and took me in his arms and carried me to safety and turned me over and pumped all that water out of me. And I remember it to this day. But uh, I don't think that there was a guardian angel there. It was my father. My father rescued me from the bottom of the pool. So, I, I, you know, sometimes you have luck. Sometimes it's circumstance. Sometimes, somehow, you are forced to think fast, and you do think fast. I don't understand why people don't give themselves credit for thinking fast or having instincts or having good reflexes. And some days it's just good luck. Anyway, we're talking to people who actually believe they've been saved by a guardian angel. If you've been saved by a guardian angel, I want to talk to you. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Tom, you are a god. You are my higher power, my friend. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show, 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number, thank you for tuning in, thanks for being part of the program. Did you know this? Survey came out, says that 55% of all adults in the United States believe they've been protected from harm by a guardian angel. Is that you? I have to hear about this. It's Lisa on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I'm just calling to say that I was saved by a guardian angel about 14 years ago. I was in a very bad car wreck. I knocked out, and when I opened my eyes, everything was white, extremely white. There was a guy standing in front of me and told me to go back, that it wasn't my time to go. And I opened my eyes. Once I opened my eyes, I was in the hospital. Couldn't that just be something you imagined? No, Tom. It couldn't no. be. That's impossible. Impossible. Why I is that impossible? Reason. Because everything was white, Tom. Everything. Yes, it was... but is it possible you imagined that? No, I saw the light. Why it do was you... my guardian angel. <laughs> but, how... but you say how you say it's impossible. Maybe it was your imagination. No, Tom. No. I felt it. I saw it. And I know it was my guardian angel. Why is it, though, that uh, most of the people who believe this are people who already believe in religion? I'm not very religious. I mean, I am I am Catholic, but I'm not Catholic that goes to church every Sunday, you know. But this particular incident, I know that it was a guardian angel. I know it was. You know it, it for not... a fact. I know for a fact it was a guardian angel. It was everything was white. I I was out. And, and it's when impossible. I up, you have absolutely no imagination at all. It's impossible that you could have imagined that. No, I I really do or not. Or had a or it'd had... be like a dream. I mean, no, I just don't. That's think impossible. Dreaming some impossible. I absolutely hundred. So you control what you dream about. Not necessarily. So it's impossible that you would have dreamed that. It's impossible. I was not sleeping. But how do you know? Because I was out. But you I just said you were out. I was unconscious. Yeah, but it when you're when you're asleep, essentially you're unconscious. Yes, I was out. I was 
No, Tom, everything turned white. Everything was white. So it's impossible to imagine light. things turning white. It's not impossible. However, in this case, it is. I know it was a guardian angel. For a fact. For a fact, no doubt about it. And I do believe in guardian angels. You do. So what but happened to the guardian angels of the people on Metrolink? You know, Tom, I don't know what happened to their guardian angels that day, but I know that they some all of them took the day off. <laughs> they didn't take their day off, but the people that survived. Maybe, it, maybe the guardian angels were sending a text message. <laughs> oh, Tom. You're my guardian angel now. You're damn straight I am. Now bend over, darling. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Araceli on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's going on? Not Here's much. Story. Um, it was about 10 years ago. I was at home um, with my two kids, 5-year-old and 1-year-old. They were in bed, and I was watching TV, fell asleep. Um, about 3 in the morning, I felt someone nudge me, uh, which woke me up. And um, I was, decided to go to bed. Obviously, it's 3 in the morning. Um, on my way to my room, I passed by a kid's bedroom and I always peek in. This day, something told me to go wake them up. So I did. And they just seemed really, really tired. Wait, something told you to wake them up? Yeah, I know my gut feeling at that point. But something nudged me, which was my guardian angel. So wait a minute. You woke your kids up for no reason? Yes. Kids, wake up. They wouldn't wake up. They were really, really tired. So I called 911. Um, and you said, hello, course, my guardian angel told me that something's wrong. You know, that's what I should have said, because I know it was my, my guardian angel. But I didn't. So anyhow... What did you uh, tell 911? I just explained the situation. after. This is a 911 call I'd like to hear. Yes, uh, hi, I have a feeling that something is wrong. Could you send the police immediately, please? Actually, yes, that's what I said. You said that. No wonder you were arguing with them. <laughs> And uh, when the paramedics got there, we actually had carbon monoxide poisoning in the house. I see. Yeah. So I and mean, and you you believe that was a guardian angel? Something woke me up. It wasn't that something, something smelled funny, or you were, maybe you were having a hard time breathing, or it couldn't well, be anything like that. Uh, no, it wasn't anything like that because I was fine. I mean, I my kids had more, obviously, carbon monoxide poisoning than I did. They were admitted into the hospital and stayed there for three, four days. Um, but, yeah, something nudged me. And where was it coming from when all my of a sudden? The... My heater. Your heater. My electric, my um, my whole, I don't know, I'm not very handy at the house. But, yeah. Electric heaters emit carbon monoxide? It's electric heater. It's the furnace, I guess, what, what I'm trying to say. Is it the furnace? I don't know what it's called. I don't know what kind of heater you have. <laughs> it wasn't that old, old of a house, but so yeah, they put up their little machines, and that's what we had in the house. And you said to them, "Well, uh, thanks for coming. If it wasn't my guardian angel, I never would have called you." I probably should have thanked them and said that, but I did thank them, and I didn't mention my guardian angel. Gosh darn, I didn't think about it. <laughs> didn't think. You see, you forgot about your guardian angel. I did see that? Well, now, next time you'll be taking the metro link at the wrong time. Oh, <laughs> maybe so. Thank you so much, Araceli. Thanks. Bye-bye. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. And by the way, no offense meant to anybody who was in that tragic accident. I, I feel for everybody who was in that tragic accident, that Metro Lake accident. All I'm saying is if there are guardian angels, why didn't those people experience a guardian angel at that time? Seriously. Explain that. 1-800-5800-TOM. I'm talking to people who have been uh, who have been helped by a guardian angel. This is Cynthia on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I adore you. I have to say that. Really? <laughs> I do. I think you're wonderful. I love that. <laughs> well, my story is um, I was driving to an appointment. And I just had this overwhelming feeling of doom. I, I was fine, and all of a sudden I just felt like I was going to die. I just knew I was going to die, and I couldn't breathe. I wanted to cry, and all of a sudden I just had a very calming effect come over me, and something told me that I was going to be okay. And then when I was driving back from my appointment, I... Um, all of a sudden, I don't hold on very tightly to the wheel, so my hands were kind of loose on the wheel. All of a sudden, the wheel just snapped left, a hard left, and I started spinning. Didn't I you get that recall notice about that? Uh, yeah, you should have taken the car in. 
Yeah. No, it was it was a used Honda Civic. No, nothing. Well, anyway, it turned. It hit a curb, and I started going 360 um, over. So I started going 360 around on the wheels, and then all of a sudden I just bumped over, and I started, you know, rolling over the top. And I was headed right for a power line. According to the police report, I was headed right for a power line, and I stopped before it, and then I did a C around it, just kind of did a curve right around it, and then continued on my straight path. And then I just rolled to a stop, upside down. And I, they could not explain that. The cops were baffled. Nothing could explain it. And the whole time I just sat in the car. And then when it stopped, I crawled out and I, I walked away from it. And that's my story. And why, that, why, why, let me ask you a question. Why would you deserve to have a guardian angel save you, but not the other people who die on the freeway? I don't know. I can't, I can't answer that for you. I know you have the questions about that, but... You know, I think maybe again, it just wasn't my time. Like everybody's saying, who knows who decides what time, whose time it is. You know, I believe in a higher power. I'm not going to. Well, say then maybe it's not a guardian is, angel. If your date is predetermined, I just wasn't your date. Well, why would a guardian angel intervene if your date has been predetermined? Then think about the lo the logic of that. You would need a guardian angel. Well, I still think that there are things that happen to wake you up. Like, maybe I was getting too lax about driving, or what do you know, or I wasn't appreciating life as it was given to me at that time, and I needed a wake-up call. So it was allowed to happen to me, perhaps, this bad thing, because I did not walk out of it unhurt. I was not dead, but I you was You know, there are unhurt. some people that no bad things ever happen to them. I know. Doesn't that kick you off? No, well, no. <laughs> maybe that's what was meant to happen. Yeah, I can't explain why, you know... That whoever's in charge up there kind of says, okay, you guys hold back. Don't go in and rescue these people. So we have death in the world. And, and I can't explain that. I'm just lucky enough that, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't taken at that time. Now, again, I'm going to ask you the same question. If 55% uh, of people believe in guardian angels, why weren't half the people who were killed in the Metrolink accident saved? If there's a lesson to be learned, there's something we're learning from that, and maybe that's the, the legislature to stop texting when you're driving or whatever. Maybe we needed, you know... So we needed, to, we needed to off a few people in order to get that message across. Well, look at how dense people are. Yeah, we need to get... You need a, a catastrophe in order to get some things through to some people. You know, not everyone is as intelligent and wonderful as you are, Tom. All right, so we need to kill a few people. Maybe. That's no guard. The guardian angels are told, "Hey, hang back." Yep. Okay. That's unfortunate, but thank goodness you've got. And whether you believe it or not, <laughs> your guardian angel's watching for you, and I'm glad for that. Oh boy! <laughs> All right, uh, Cynthia. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likes Show.